Well, hi there, everybody. This is Justin Dyke from CartoonSmart.com, and we're going to be learning how to make a side scroller app uh, for either iOS or TVOS. But I've taught so many iOS uh, tutorials, it's a little bit more exciting for me to start this project off as uh, TVOS, and we'll tinker around and, and build it up in in that uh, for that device family. But then. What we can do at the end of this is just take the classes that we've written and of course our assets that we use in the game and then just bring them into an iOS application as uh, as well. And there's really not going to be much difference. There's just a, so far at least my playing with the project, there's just a few lines of code that we'll end up probably deleting for iOS, mostly to do with pressing the select button on the remote. So uh, let's start this off over here. I'm using Xcode uh, 7.1 and again, there's going to be a game. We're going to call this uh, side... Uh, scroller and I'm just going to probably say this to the desktop here I'm going to set the language to Swift and the game technology obviously to uh, sprite kit and even though it doesn't say it that, that is uh, Swift 2 okay so let's uh, let's do a little initial setup I'm going to go over here to the uh, game scene dot SKS file I'm going to change this size to be 1920 by 1080 it's always a good thing to do right away and uh, then over here in the game scene.swift file, I'm going to go ahead and take out everything that we've got uh, included in the template. Uh, I'll probably leave that in there, but I'll just comment uh, that out. There we go. So I'll build a nice clean file with nothing happening. And then uh, let's go ahead and import in some starting assets. So uh, most of the time you're gonna, when you're going to import in your assets, you'll do it into your uh, game assets catalog or your assets catalog. Um, for some reason, when you make a TVOS app, they give you two of these now. It's interesting. Well, I kind of do know why. You, you'll see that this, this assets catalog seems to be sort of reserved for um, showing you how to make your uh, nice old fancy new TVOS icons. So we're going to put all of our stuff into there. And uh, you can pull these assets right out of uh, the, the finished project. I'm just going to dump in um, uh, two files here, a ladder and a pole. And uh, then I'm going to also import in here this uh, dude.atlas uh, file. Now, I could just take all these images and throw them right into here. Uh, but and, I, and uh, let me preface this by saying I don't see much of a performance difference, so I think that's a perfectly fine way to do this as well. But you can uh, go ahead and create a, a folder on your desktop. You can give it the name of .atlas at the end of it, and then put in all of your sequential images inside of here for your character. Um, as long as they're kind of reasonably small like this, they should all fit into one uh, texture atlas, which is what happens uh, at runtime with Xcode is it creates a, a sprite sheet or a texture atlas and it is supposed to help speed things up a little bit. So I'm just going to dump this entire thing inside of here and, and try not to tell you one way is better than the other. So um, uh, another thing to keep in mind while we're looking at this is that uh, the, for uh, TV OS apps, uh, we're not dealing with retina display images, so you can see that our 2x and our 3x slots are, are just going to be left open over here. Uh, obviously, if we we're going to do this for iOS as well, we'd want to put in there, um, you know, your your images for 2x and 3x, and, and probably even delete out the 1x ones. Well, no, I don't want to say that. Leave them in there. I think the iPad Mini, the first one, still has a non-retina display. And um, if you have a lot of assets, uh, what you wanna, you're going to want to do is start to break them up uh, based on particular devices. So uh, I'm just right clicking over here. You'd probably want to add Apple TV and then just take only your specific 1x images over here to your to the Apple TV slot. Uh, but you know we're not really working with many images here at all and we don't need to worry about the, the file size basically. Um, but uh, yeah, if you did have a huge project, that's something to consider. For right now, we can just get away with making these be uh, universal images, which is fine. And doo -doo -doo, uh, let's go over here. Uh, I would say that uh, if you have no interest or if you already know how to work with the um, uh, the scene editor here in Xcode uh, 7, you can probably skip ahead to the next lesson. What I'm going to do is just show you guys some of the basics of really just laying out your game and then we'll start coding in the, the beginning of the next video. So uh, what you're, most of the time we're going to start to lay out things. You're going to grab a color sprite over here. This is, as you can see, an SK uh, sprite node. And uh, then from there you can give it a texture or um, you can decide not to give it a texture. Let's, it's a little bit more exciting if we give it at least a texture. So let's go ahead and uh, do that for our ladder, which I ended up, when I made that artwork, I called it ladder, but I, 
I ended up using it more like a platform. Uh, but if you want, you could also just use a color sprite. And uh, I rotated that by accident. Let me hit that back down to zero. And I'll show you that you could use just uh, colored sprites for uh, just kind of laying out boundaries in your game. And so, for example, I've got now this color sprite down here at the bottom. It does not have a physics boundary to it, but if you scroll down to the bottom here, you can see that you can set up a physics definition. And let's take a look at bounding rectangle. It's a little hard to see, um, but it did actually make a little kind of blue outline around this. Uh, indicating that it does have a physics body. Uh, something to keep in mind is that once it has a physics body, it's going to just float away unless you uh, toggle off affected by gravity. And for a ground plane, uh, you're going to want to probably toggle off everything over here. So dynamic means that <laughs> it's going to be included in the physics simulation. So if something heavy enough bumps up against this thing, it's going to start to move away. Uh, if you allow rotation, then it's also going to rotate as it's like moving away. And and then obviously affected by gravity is, is pretty simple too. To you know, it's just going to float down uh, very fast. By the way, you probably won't even see it if you were to load up the the screen because it's floating down here at the bottom anyway. So it would just you know, be gone. Uh, then on the other hand, we can uh, use an image and uh, get away with uh, setting up a physics definition that has an alpha mask to it. So uh, this is pretty cool. And again, it's uh, maybe a little bit hard to see, but if I zoom in here you'll get an idea of what's going on. Now it's not going to, it's basically working with the transparent data in the image to set up the physics body. So look how cool that is. Now it's not going to try to make like a jail cell, you know, and, and fill in the interior data here. But um, and let me actually grab one other image here to, to play around with. We'll grab one of our little guys and set them up to uh, but this is really cool that uh, that Xcode does this. And um, if any of you are familiar with Cocos 2D, it was a real pain to, to kind of make a physics body that conformed to the actual uh, artwork. So those days are gone. Uh, we get that nice little convenience right there. Uh, let me delete that guy out. And I'll show you that there's another cool option in here. You can set pinned. So I could toggle that on. I'm going to toggle affected by gravity off. I'm going to allow rotation and I'll make it dynamic. So if I had another object, let's say right over here, and we'll make this a, a bounding rectangle. I'm going, to, I'm going to set this to be dynamic and I'm going to allow rotation and affected by gravity. So I'm essentially just going to build this and let it just drop down onto um, this, uh, this ladder right here. And, Again, so we can see this because it does happen kind of quick. Let's put this guy well up here and uh, let's build a project. So there you go. That's uh, That gives you an example of what pin does. It's actually pinning it to this uh, particular location right here. And I believe, actually I haven't tried this, so we'll see what happens. I believe I've, I set the anchor point over here to the left and um, at 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, these two, uh, it, the anchor point or center point or pivot point is going to be right in the middle. But if I put it right there, well, this could be a little bit interesting. I might have, I maybe should have done that uh, prior to setting the physics body. Let's try that again. Let's put zero in there and then put the physics body in. Point is, I'm trying to I'm trying to make it so it swivels around on the right side. So I'll go ahead and put that back in. Mm, could be a little bug. Well, let's just see. Let's see what happens. Why not? Okay. Well, it is obviously pivoting now around uh, that point. And <laughs> It's interesting. Okay, so you get an idea of kind of uh, what what you can do, and that that would actually be really fun for some uh, uh, platforms to have them, you know, be a little clunky to stand on. You'd have to like rebalance yourself. Let me set this guy back to zero point five. And uh, another thing that you can do is, and this is a new another new feature of Xcode Seven, is um, uh, unfold this or make it basically slide upward and uh, you can animate these things just right from the start so let's uh let's not do it with that guy because he's pinned over there let's grab another ladder one more time and i 
again. We'll set the physics, the alpha mask for this. Okay, and let's give it a little name so we can identify it easier. No, not that. Let's call it moving platform. Okay, so you can see it down here. Uh, now, right where we pulled out all, our, our color sprites, you can just scale down here or scroll down here and uh, find some of your uh, preset up actions. So, um, what I'm going to go with here is, is a move action, and this is a little bit different than move to. Move to would um, move the platform to a very specific spot. This is going to move it by a certain amount. So, just drag that in there, and then I can offset the location uh, using these two values over here. Uh, I can choose the amount of time that's going to that's going to occur, and then also just the easing effect of it. Uh, probably for a video game like this, I would just go with a linear effect, but you could ease it out. So let's uh, let's make this go up a positive 200 points. And if you want to preview what that's going to do, oh, you know what? <laughs> I, uh, I I should first actually make it so that this is not dynamic. So let's turn it affected by gravity off, and turn that off. Okay, so now you can see. That's pretty cool. Um, so you can see that it moved up, and you can also copy and paste these two. So just uh, paste this back down here, and uh, there's a couple ways I could reverse this. I could either right click and go to reverse, or I could just put a negative 200 in here as well. So negative 200, and then you can see if I click animate again, it's going to show me that it goes right back down, and you can actually. Uh, uh, loop this infinitely too. So I've got both of these selected. I'm going to click that little symbol right there. You'll notice this little bar shows up in the background indicating what, what what's actually being looped here. And um, you can do this a certain number of times or just make it infinite. I'm just going to go for infinite. And uh, now if we were to run this, I could have done it over here too. Doink. So you can see it's just going up and down and uh, and that is uh, really pretty much everything you need to know about uh, setting up the level uh, that we're going to create uh, for this uh, at least the first part of this example and uh, let's uh, cut out of here we um, if you're wondering hey wait 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 we haven't set up the character yet that's okay we're not going to set him up uh, this video uh, and uh, we're going to do things a little bit different I'm going to make a custom class uh, for that uh, particular character so the um, the physics definition and, and stuff like that we, we're not going to worry about setting up inside of um, inside of the SKS file like we did with the platform we're gonna actually do that inside of the class itself but the cool thing is is that for a lot of this you can get away with just setting up your physics definitions inside of here and you don't even have to worry about custom classing your um, layout objects so uh, brave new world ahead right if you're if you're used to the old ways of doing things okay I'll see you next video where we get to write some code